communities of practice and situated second language learning. Now, another strand in sociolinguistic studies has been this focus on communities of practice and situated learning. Now, before we move on to this, we need to understand the concept of speech events. What is a speech event? A speech event is a um, is, is, is a chunk of conversation or a chunk of dialogue that might happen in different situations. For instance, it can be a telephone conversation, uh, a conversation that takes place in, uh, at service encounters, um, might be classroom lessons or group discussions. So these are the speech events. So the people interested in uh, communities of practice are interested in how learning occurs, um, especially second language learning occurs during speech events. So traditional ethnographers of the, of the first language have actually studied in detail stable speech events. That is what's going on in the real life. They go out and study that. And this is more or less stable because it's a, about uh, the first language or the native speakers. So it is not a problem so much. Um, second language ethnographers are more interested in studying the, in the instability or the instability or the flexibility of the system or the language system during the speech events that... Um, when the second language learners engage in uh, these speech events. Second language ethnographers um, have come to this new concept of communities of practice, how people actually come together to learn. And this, in these communities of practice, the participants' role might change over time and we will talk about it. How can that happen? So first of all, what is a community of practice? So a community of practice is not just any group, but it is a group, it might be a pair, who, who or which comes together to, for a mutual goal. It can be any learning goal and uh, that is called a community of practice. And if we want to sort of like uh, clearly identify a goal of second language learning, then we will say the community of practice will include the group of people who have come together uh, to learn a language and who are engaged in a specific uh, goal. So within this community of practice, practice actually members are um, engaged in certain practices, with a, but the goal is uh, the same. So these communities of practice, then we would say, and we would like to make our classrooms, these communities of practice also, are defined by membership and by collaborative practices. It is argued, and you have Leif and Wenger, especially over here talking about it, a very good book. You have the reference in your own book also. They argued that learning is socially situated, that all learning is situated, that the learning that happens is definitely happens in social context. And within the communities of practice, there are some people who are out slightly at the periphery or on the outskirts of the group. And then there are people who are at the core of the group. The people who are at the core of the group are the people uh, who are more proficient. It can be more proficient speakers of that language or it can be the teacher itself. And uh, surrounding that, there might be a circle of people, uh, students who know more language than the other. And then you have others who don't know so much of that second language. So it actually depends on how much do the people in the core actually invite the outsiders or those at the periphery to come and participate in the middle and to give them the strategies that they know of 
and to engage in practices of second language learning that will define whether second language learning will be successful or unsuccessful. So the more the participation of those at the periphery of this community of practice, the more the second language learning will be successful.